What a play as a tour boss day, a finished mug. Let's finish off this servitor. So we're gonna start off with Balthazar Gold. And I'm sorry I didn't have a intro for this one. I just uploaded everything and realized that I don't have an intro for it, but uh, basically it's all the colors we used before. The only color that we're adding to the mix is Gorthor Brown and I think Mephiston Red. So with the Balthazar Gold, we're painting in the buttons here on the coat that our servitor is carrying. And we're also just re-highlighting the crests, the gold eagles on the helmets. I love this figure so much. It is so awesome. Okay, then we're gonna highlight rust gray. I highlight the coats now. After the Agrax Earthshade wash, I noticed that again, Agrax Earthshade makes it really uh, oily, shiny, and um, I didn't like that very much. So what I'm gonna be doing is looking for the raised upper areas and uh, painting more, like the majority of the raised areas, and just kind of hoping to leave the wash down in the the recesses there if I can. If you've got the Death Corp Creek Quartermaster and you enjoy this video, stay tuned because I'll be doing the, I'm gonna call him the uh, Secretary Servitor next. He's the one with all the lists and paper files and uh, everything, recordings. And he just looks so gross. He looks so, so gross. I don't even think he has a right arm his left arm is clutching his little typewriter thing to his body and he's got all these scrolls on it. Oh, it's just so gross. Like this little guy over here, I think looks like more, more of a human, even though the other guy does have half a face just like our guy here does. Okay, so you can see that I'm painting in very short uh, sequence of breast strokes. That's really the uh, best way, I think, to achieve a good cloth effect. You go in the same direction and you want to be able to see the darker color underneath of what you're painting. I also like to go in diagonal paint strokes. I've noticed that for me, diagonal paint strokes always work really, really well. Uh, I'm actually looking at the finished model right now in front of me and I'm I'm really kind of proud of it. It's it's supposed to be a dark model. There aren't very many bright areas on it like say an uh, an Eldar model or something, but it's still I'm I'm really pleased with it. Okay, Fen region gray is going to be the toppermost of the poppermost highlight for the blue gray here. So you're gonna be using even less than you did with the rust gray. And for this, what we're really gonna do is look for where the rust gray highlight is the heaviest, and we're gonna be painting inside of that. That creates the effect of transition in the color that happens when light falls on an object. Oh, and seriously, you guys, I was at Barnes & Noble the other day, and I was looking at these cheap uh, drawing books and sketching and um, you know art books. I don't remember anything from my high school art class and I didn't take art at all in college so uh, I might actually just pick up an art book to look at how to do uh, portraits and depth and perspective and all of that stuff to maybe help out with my painting a bit. Increase my skill set I was actually thinking of doing a little bit of uh, blood stains for the coat, but I couldn't find I couldn't find uh, bullet holes or, or tears or anything where where the blood could come through. So I decided to just leave it um, as if the quartermaster executed the guy by shooting him in the face and then taking his helmet 
and uniform, which did not get bloodied. I guess the collar would be kind of bloody of the uniform if the quartermaster shot the poor guy in his face. Who knows? Oh, so grimdark. Okay, at this point, what we're going to try to do is paint on a little bit of Runefang steel to show the highlight on all the silvers. So I've uh, Runefang steel is a little bit tough, so I kind of zoom in a little bit, and if it gets out of focus, I, I apologize. Apologize to the nice people, Igor. I'm sorry. All right, so we're just touching up all of the silver, and. We're trying to just get the edges, the hard edges. So like this little video camera picked feeder thing. I'm just touching up the edges, getting the edges of the helmet here that I always do with my dark iron for all of my Death Corps of Krieg. I'm just painting in all the silver on the edge just so that the eye has some place to focus on so you can kind of see the shape. And again, you don't always have to use the tip of your brush to get the paint on for the uh, little ridge at the top of the helmet. Sometimes I like to just use the side of my paintbrush to get the, that highlight color on it. Now this circuit has got all sorts of wires and cords and tubes all over him so I'm, I decided to just go around and paint up what I see. Starting with this gas tank or canister at the back or oxygen canister whatever it is and just moving my way all the way around. So I, I absolutely love how Forge World made sure with the sculpt that you do not for one second believe that these servitors are combat worthy. There are, there are no weapons, they look all look frail and short and diminutive. Even the taller servitors, which we're going to get to, the medical one and the secretary one, are absolutely frail. The medical one's got all sorts of augmented arms that look like it could be used for self-defense but in no way there like this the this guy here doesn't look like he has any weapons the secretary servitor is not holding anything but it's typewriter thing so they look very much like non-combat servitors which i i think is great okay next what we're going to do is we're going to color in the little eye lens of the camera or the picked feeder and we're going to use Mephiston Red. And all we're doing is getting a little dot on the tip of our brush and we're gonna just lightly brush it in because the lens is so small. We're just gonna, we're just gonna boot, just gonna see if we can boot right there. I'm looking around to see if there's any more red lenses or areas where we can paint red. I decided to highlight the parchment with Karak stone instead of going brighter. Sometimes I go brighter back up to Rackarth flesh, uh, but I decided to make this guy's parchment look a little bit older, a little bit more faded and yellowed with age, and Karak stone is terrific for this. Again, you want to leave the shade in darker areas as much as you can. Now what I'm going to do is take my Micron Arts pen, Sigma Micron point zero zero five from Sakura. And uh, there you can see it's point zero zero five, the smallest in its class. And going at an angle, we're going to try to just 
uh, make as fine lines as we can. Now you see the sleeve is kind of hanging over so it, it kind of makes this a little bit difficult to get to so you ha kind of have to get your angle set in your mind before you start going because you're probably not going to get the exact angle that you want to get this line down right. I'm also trying to do it as like little dots rather than cursive script which is my usual way for doing these parchments because I think these are not like I said before they're not prayer scrolls they're not purity seals where handwritten prayers and blessings are written down they're almost like lists and uh, in my mind anyways they're lists of, of the amount of equipment the servitor has picked up or its form and function in case it gets lost or they're much more data oriented so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my carrot stone and I'm going to wa wash it down a lot and thin it down with some Lamian medium. And if that doesn't, if you don't have that, you can just go with your some water, thin it down a lot, maybe like three parts water or Lamian medium to one part paint, mix it all up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just glaze this color over to make the effect of aged parchment. So the ink has faded a little bit. On the on the scroll, I, I I might do a separate video or boss take five just for dedicated to doing a purity scroll and stuff like that because a lot of people have been not actually a lot. What am I talking about? Like one or two people have asked me in the past, and I've gotten emails and messages saying, "Oh, can you do like faded parchment or how you do your faded parchment?" And um, not gotten around to it yet. Gorthor Brown is our final color, which we're going to use to highlight the robe. So I kind of like Mornfang Brown as a color. It reminds me of the old Calton Brown, which I used a lot. And I've been struggling to find a good, a good color to highlight it with. Before, what I would do would be just add a little bit of, of Deneb Stone to my Calton Brown and that would create a good color and I found that Gorthor Brown seems to be as close of a substitute as I could get. So it's a fine color to substitute it. It creates the look of um, dried, like sun-dried cloth and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for all of your Mornfang Brown colors as a highlight but for I think this kind of weathered weather beaten robe looking thing, it, it works out really well. So again, I'm going to hit like the shoulders, the top of where the shoulders would be if this guy was a human, the top of the hood, the uh, imperial the double headed eagle on his left eye patch, anywhere where you can see folds, I'm trying to get the upper area of the fold. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, appreciate every single view and every single new subscriber. I'm seeing that I'm getting a lot more new subscribers. So thank you, everybody, who started subscribing. And uh, thank you for watching all the way up to here. Stay tuned for the next Quartermaster Servitor. And let's zoom in a little bit to show a little bit of a thumbs up. Have a close up here. So you can see all the detail. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Latest players.